he's down. And of course he did, and we have Maud and her family to thank for that. Encouraged by his family, Baum did write his stories down, and the resulting book, Mother Goose in Prose, was published in 1897. The book created quite a stir within literary circles. Unlike the typical children's books of the time, Mother Goose in Prose was sumptuously illustrated with drawings by the talented Maxfield Parrish. Mother Goose in Prose being his first book was quite a success and gave him the confidence to do another book called Father Goose, his book. And this was a series of rhymes which he did, and these were his own. And he was lucky to find W.W. Uh, w. Denslow, who illustrated the book. It was absolutely ideal for both of them because Baum had the pictures in his head and put them down with words. Denslow could translate exactly what Baum put on paper. You had the very first Baum and Denslow collaboration, and to everyone's amazement in the United States, it became the best-selling children's book of 1899. Father Goose went into six printings. By today's standard, they wouldn't have been long, but in those days, uh, you know, 50,000 was a big press run. And that really set him as a children's author. As the accolades for Father Goose came rolling in, all of the hardship and struggle began to come into perspective for L. Frank Baum. And at last he could see that his years of fruitless wanderings had a purpose. Frank now let his fertile imagination run free. And one day, while entertaining a group of children, he began to tell the tale of a little girl named Dorothy and her adventures in a magical and mysterious faraway land. And according to the family legend, one little girl in the crowd piped up and said, Mr. Baum, where did this happen? Where did they live? And Baum was nonplussed, but he glanced around the room and built anticipation by repeating the question, where did they live? Where did they live? As his, you know, killing time trying to come up with something and his eye caught uh, his filing cabinet, which had two drawers. The first drawer was labeled letter A dash letter N. The second one was lettered O dash Z. And they all lived in the land of Oz. People ask, well, you know, who does the cowardly lion really mean? Is the scarecrow a real person? All of these things. And I really don't believe they were. I think these were just characters that were streaming through his head, and he just had to have an outlet. And on many of those long trips, uh, when he had time in that hotel room, he supposedly wrote down uh, bits and pieces of the story on anything at hand. And I know Maude used to get angry with him because he would get up in the middle of the night and write on the wallpaper <laughs> in the room. <laughs> but he didn't want to lose it. So he started writing about Oz and got the story written down and then realized that in order for this story to come alive for the children, it needed to have good illustrations. And he and W.W. W. Denslow got together and created these color plates that the publisher didn't want to publish because it would be so expensive. Baum and Denslow had this ambitious scheme. They wanted the book in color, which was almost unheard of. There were 24 color plates. There were over a hundred two-color illustrations that changed as Dorothy went from one place to another. He and Denslow were determined that these books would come out with the color plates because he wanted the story to come alive for the children. And that's what was most important for him. So they put the money up to publish these books with the color plates. And of course, they sold immediately and had to go into a second printing before Christmas. And they had just been out for a few months. To have a book like that in 1900 for children was enormously innovative. 24 full color plates and 100 line drawings in two colors throughout the book and designed specifically by Denslow so sometimes the drawings were underneath the actual type. It was, it was amazing for a children's book to be that elaborate and that welcoming. And this was before there were publicity machines and media hoopla. This book was succeeding on the basis of its strong, strong appeal to children, how it captured their imagination and their dreams. I think the success of The Wizard speaks for itself. The company couldn't keep up with it, <laughs> and it is one of the most popular books of all time. As far as writing another Oz book to success, that's great, wonderful. I'm glad people enjoy it. Now I'm going to move on to something else, or so he thought. With the success of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz and his other early books, 